Okay, everybody. Hi. It's great to have you join us. Thank you for joining me today for the Innovation Initiative webinar. Um, I'm Nancy Sasaki. I'm the Executive Director here. And I'll be walking you through the process and uh, letting you know what, what, um, what you go through the process yourself. Um, I just want to see if I can get my screen to move. So this is the agenda that we'll follow today. I'll give you an overview of the Innovation Initiative some of the current guidelines that are important for you to know. I'll go into the application and the process, and especially talk about the eight questions that you'll find you need to complete when you get into the application. And then we'll have time for questions and answers. <laughs> and please feel free to ask questions as we're going along, if you would like. One of the things that I like to point out to everybody is that in our strategic plan, I found that there are some really key words that give you an idea of what it is that we're looking for in our innovation initiative, <coughs> such as change maker. And that's the opportunity in, to invest in technology and ideas for a return on our investment. The ones that really might <coughs> excuse me, rise to the level of being um, a real legend um, kind of project in our community or that makes a big in terms of cost, quality, and, and capacity. And you'll hear me talk about those, two, those three areas of cost, quality, and capacity in a few minutes. <laughs> of course, innovation and to innovate is a, is a key part of our strategic plan. Um, and trying to foster entrepreneurship and innovation in organizations, <laughs> um, especially in the delivery of services to those that are the most vulnerable in our community. We also, in engagement, we are looking at opportunities to discover how we can make our dollars go farther. So when we invest in a project, how can we help that project really get ingrained into our community so that it's more sustainable, which leads to the, la the second to the last topic, which is sustainability, and that's to try and ensure that projects that we fund do become a part of the fabric of our community. And if not, then if we, what are the lessons that we can learn about what didn't allow that to happen? And then accountability, which is holding ourselves accountable to the community, but also holding the community account accountable for accomplishing what it sets out to do key thing or especially in our innovation initiative. We do have three types of awards. I'll tell you a lot more about the innovation initiative. Mission support, we just finished those out um, in February of this year. Um, that's a million dollar pool of capital that we award to organizations that are looking to be innovative or move the needle. Um, they are operational support and they allow organizations to do what they want to with the funds that they receive. Um, our responsive grants are under $25,000. They are used for time-sensitive types of things. They are also used for leadership and operational development. Some of the time-sensitive things that we've funded are purchasing um, new ovens for Mama's Kitchen because theirs were about to break down, and that was a key component of the work that they do. Um, types of um, leadership and operational development, there was a CEO in our community who had been accepted into the Stanford School of Business Management or Nonprofit Management and needed a couple, or needed a small grant to complete the tuition um, dollars and so we provided that. We've also funded organizations for their strategic planning process as well as um, 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 trauma-informed training for their staff, those kinds of things. When we talk about um, oper uh, operational and leadership development, but again, they're kind of one-time things. They're not anything that are a part of your ongoing fundraising. But most of our time today is going to talk about the innovation initiative. And in our strategic vision, we're looking to advance health and wellness. I think most everybody knows that in terms of our mission, um, using innovative approaches that serve the most vulnerable populations. And our, for us, the most vulnerable populations, our four target areas, are under 250% of poverty, um, the uninsured and the underinsured, also uh, homeless and children. And although we don't target specifically the homeless or the children, 
we want to make sure that our dollars are reaching those populations. So if your project that you're going to, that you want to bring forward for the innovation initiative doesn't touch the homeless or children, that's fine as long as you're dealing with the community that's under 250 percent of poverty. So you need to meet at least one of those four target not all of them. In the past, some of the projects that we have funded, Text for Baby and One EAP were the first ones that we funded in 2010, um, followed by the Community Information Exchange. This one has become one of our largest projects in, in that we did just re award them another million dollars. So they have received two million dollars from us for this particular project. CCSD, their uh, wireless observed therapy project was in 2012. Um, Access Youth Academy was in 2013 and Solutions for Change in 2014. All of these are still in progress except for Text for Baby and One EAP in terms of receiving funding for us from us. Um, we have closed out the grants for Text for Baby and One EAP and I'm um, glad to say that both of those are continuing and in fact have, have really expanded beyond what we had initially anticipated would happen here in San Diego County, especially for Text for Baby, as that has gone statewide. One EAP didn't really um, survive here in this particular county, but we've learned a lot of lessons from that, and we did get a lot of benefit from bringing a customized solution to San Diego County if nothing else, to be a catalyst for something else that the county is now building. So you know, some of them go far and some of them go only so far. Again, I talked about who we wanted to impact with regard to our target populations. They're the, they're fair, two of them are fairly broad, two of them being identifying the most vulnerable populations of homelessness and children. So what is innovation to us? Um, Typically, these projects are looking to impact a broader cross-section of our community. Although some of them, as you could tell from the previous slides, were to individual organizations, many of those individual organizations are involving other community organizations in their process because true system change will, will require that. Um, they're, look, they're a lot of times looking together, looking to work together in collaboration to bring about that systemic change. And knowing that there is a confluence of factors that are happening in our community and other places across the country where there are less dollars and more people in need. So what are we going to do or what are you going to do to really be able to provide more services or to the same number of people or hopefully more people by improving the capacity, improving quality or um, increasing quality. Um, so again, those three things, I can say them many, many times, and, and, and hopefully you're picking up that you would want to address at least one of these in the application process and be able to talk about that. So we do want to know um, what we need to do now to be able to provide for the people that we serve. It's important to show the data that supports your idea, either by supporting the actual project or the project is designed to create the data to prove the best practice. So either way, if data is important, there are certainly a couple of board members that will be looking for that. How do you know it's a problem? How do you know, how have you identified and targeted the right population by the use of data? And you can think of that in terms of hot spotting. That's a, that's a project that was based out of Camden, New Jersey, where Dr. Brenner took the Medicaid data, uh, data that they had available and was able to determine where the highest utilizers of hospital emergency department services were located, found that they were primarily in these two apartment complexes, and he brought wraparound services to those apartment complexes in order to reduce the number of calls and transports to the emergency department. And in that way, saved millions of dollars in the system, and it's continuing that project and expanding that project to this day. So those are, you know, those are things that don't involve technology. They're truly database completely, but then the solution was, to, to provide the wraparound services. For us, um, we provide services and funds for the two counties of San Diego and Imperial County. In, a, in the innovation initiative, the organization providing the services can be based outside of these two counties, but the work that they are doing needs to be in these two counties, partnering with a, non, a local nonprofit in one of the two counties. What, what we're also excited about in terms of the innovation initiative is that we may 
pilot it here in some respects. You may pilot in a small part of our community in one of these two counties. But if it's that great of a project, the scalability and its ability to expand, even if you don't do it, should be evident in the amount in the work that you're doing and the type of project that you're proposing. Some of the basic qualifications is to either be a 501c3 um, here in San Diego or Imperial County. If you're not a 501c3, you can be a fiscal intermediary. You can work through a fiscal intermediary that is a 501c3. And if you're outside of the two counties, as I mentioned, you need to partner with an organization in San Diego or Imperial County. We like to see these projects fully implemented in three years. Um, like the CIE, the Community Information Exchange that I talked about earlier, they got into implementation at that third year, but to really make it a viable project and to be able to expand it so that it is much more robust and to scale it, it required more funding and bringing them beyond the three years. So there's always that potential. <clears throat> um, we also like to see an evaluation component. How are you going to know that you're reaching your milestones for one? And how will you know what impact you're having on the people that you're trying to serve? I think this is something that a lot of foundations are kind of moving to with regard to the evaluation component. is beyond just the count. How many people did you serve? What was the impact of the service that you provided to them on their lives? And for us, especially in the area of health and wellness. So it's everything of that you know, we hope that you're trying to do is to be innovative in the way that you're looking at things. I'm going to pause there and see if there are any questions with regard to that part before I actually jump into the application. Several of you are still on mute, so if you are asking a question, remember to unmute yourself. Um, there is a question um, from in the chat box that asks that there is only one award being made. That is typically what we do. Um, in the first year, um, they decided to split the award between the two organizations, Text for Baby and One App. But in the years since then, there has only been one organization or collaboration that has received the, the full million dollars. And the full million dollars is typically tranched and distributed over a, a two-year or three-year period, depending on when implementation happens and depending on the needs of that particular proposal or project. Seeing or hearing no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the actual application process. This is um, clearly um, the, the, you know, the, just the specifics and the demographics of what we ask for with regard to the organization, your, the mission statement, etc. cetera. Um, we also ask um, some of the more detailed questions about who your board Hi, members are. Hello? Is there a question? Would you mind putting your phone on mute then, please? Thank you. We also do ask what, for information about your primary contact as well as the CEO or the executive director. Sometimes they are not one and the same. Again, there's somebody that's making some noise. Would you mind putting your phone on mute? Thank you. Um, as, we, as I mentioned, our target population, um, there, will, there are questions about how many you expect to reach in those target populations. Again, you don't have to be working in all four. We do ask um, the percentage of it with regard to gender in those populations, the race and ethnicity that you'll be reaching, the age range, and the total number of people served. We ask which region you serve in so that we know we do spread out um, San Diego County with a little bit more detail than we do Imperial County at this time. Um, so these are now starting into the eight qualifying questions. These are the questions that are a part of the application and really important in terms of the way that you ask these questions. Um, the first question being the problem you, that you want to address. Um, this is where you state the problem um, that your project is going to address. Indicate how you know it's a problem. I mean, you may have data that says, you know, this has been trending, this has been, you know, our experience. It could be anecdotal, and what you want to do is create the data to prove what you're doing, what the problem is. Why do people need your service? Um, why would they come to your particular organization? Um, why do you, you may see it as a problem, but do they? That's kind of where this, you're able to answer 
this quick particular question. I'll also tell you that the number of characters that you have to answer these questions is limited. Um, so you really do have to get very succinct in, in your um, answers. Nancy. You also give us a, yes. Hi, um, now that you mentioned the character, maximum character amount, well, uh, it says 750, so is that including spaces? or I mean, that really makes a difference if it's with or without space, counting space um, or not. I believe that it does include spaces. It does? Okay. Okay. Um, there's also a question that's asking, what is the anticipated reach in terms of number of people to be impacted by the project? That really varies um, and, uh, and in terms of what we would expect. The board will look at your cost per patient or client served to see whether that seems a, like a reasonable number. But we've had as few as 50 because it was a research project and it was being implemented in a way that was going to be completely new um, to some projects like the CIE that eventually wants to get to probably one-third of the people in need in our county. So it really depends on the project and what's realistic for you to be able to do. So you, you want to be able to talk about how you, how you start out, preferably small most likely, to test it, tweak it, change it, expand it, and how it will expand from there to what the next expansion might be. And you can talk about that without the intention of you actually being the group that does it, um, or that you might see that there's a pass off at some point in the future because it's bigger than what you want to do or, or have the resources to do. Or it may be that your project is to provide the resources for you to be able to scale it at that level. <clears throat> so the project overview, overview, we are looking for the health impact. What, are you going, what is your project going to do to improve the health or the wellness of the people that you're trying to serve? What are your goals and your purpose? How will you know what you've accomplished? Um, why your organization? If this is such a great idea, we would expect that others are going to want to um, provide it as well, maybe create a different, slightly different project. So why would people come to your organization? Um, and also, if there's any opportunity for you to do or conduct even a brief market analysis in terms of what the size of your market is in our communities, then that would be really beneficial. This is an area that we recognize most nonprofits don't have the opportunity or the resources to conduct a market, a true market analysis. So anecdotal or reporting that kind of information is also um, uh, helpful. Talk about the key elements of innovation. Why do you think this qualifies as innovative? And I think one of the things that I see in many of the applications is that there might be a creative use of something that's already, in, that's already been applied, but maybe an organization is taking it and using it in a slightly different way. Whereas that's really creative and probably going to be very helpful, it doesn't rise, raise it to the level of being innovative. So really be able to talk about why you think that this is innovative. Is it a one of a kind? Is it something that's only been done in a few parts of our country or that kind of thing? Um, really be able to talk about why it's innovative. How does it advance health and wellness? Again, really key to us, since that's a part of our mission, is advancing health and wellness. So how is this going to do that? And what's so different about what you're proposing? You'll see these questions that I'm posing right here in the application as well. So it kind of is a trigger to help you remember what you really want to address in a particular section. What is being done now, if anything? Or is, it, is the problem not being addressed and you've found this really key thing that you think is going to work and that you want to be able to do this? And then I'm going to tell you that really do your homework. Don't come in and say you're the only one doing this and allow the board to do a Google search and show up, show you at the middle of your presentation that there are several others doing this. Make sure that you've done your homework and searched for similar projects and be able to um, speak to why your project is different. Or if it isn't, how you're aligning and learning from the other projects that are in existence in other areas. Um, <clears throat> the next one is to look at the impact of your innovation. Again, I go back to the key questions that we are looking to have an impact in, in terms of reducing costs, improving quality, or increasing capacity. How is it that you're going to implement this project and make a difference in our community, move the needle on health and wellness, 
and at full implementation, why will it all matter? What will be the change that we are expecting at full implementation? Project leadership, I can't tell you how important this is. Um, that I have seen the board fund a project primarily because when the leader came in and did their presentation, their dedication and their commitment to the proposal was so evident they couldn't avoid it. In this particular section, you're only able to give us words, but it is important for us to understand why you think your leadership, and whether that's the CEO or the executive director or a leadership team that's been created to address this particular project, how, how can you convince us that they are the ones that are going to um, keep their eye on the ball and make sure that this doesn't get lost with another priority? Um, how are you going to track, what is that, their kind of track record for completing projects is, project is also important. Um, the sixth question talks about an outline of a sustainability plan. This is probably an area that's one of the hardest for nonprofits to really to get and to be able to answer. That doesn't mean that just because you can't answer it that you aren't eligible for this award. Um, it identifies for us that it's an area that, that might need some help as we go through the project. But to the best of your ability, you should be able to be, talk about your startup costs. We hope that you're able to talk about where you see yourself breaking even um, in terms of your estimates and what your return on investment is going to be at what point out in the future. Um, you know, as, as this is just a million dollar award, what is your plan to hopefully reduce your dependence on grants? How will this project continue to sustain itself and continue beyond the grant, the grant or the award that you get from us? <clears throat> if you get to the place that you're able to talk about um, how you will measure um, what changes are happening, how you might measure, how you might need to tweak your project from the original proposal, or even pull the plug. How will you, at what point would you know this isn't going to go um, and be able to talk about that? Again, it's a hope that we have that organizations are able to think about it in that regard. I can tell you that we rarely get that in our proposal. So don't stress over that particular question. Just be able to talk a little bit about what your startup costs are, your estimates for break-even, um, and if you can, is there a plan to reduce your dependence on grants? And as I say that, the seventh question is a plan to scale the project. Is there a plan for scaling the project? Can it vi be viable in the other markets? What are your key milestones? And again, this is where you can also talk about your exit strategy. One of the things I'm going to tell you as well is that you will find that in some of the sections you might not be able to, might not use up all of the characters. If there was a section that you needed and wanted to say more about that you didn't, that you ran out of room, use an open space to continue your, your feedback to us about another section that you didn't get enough information into. So use up all the space that you have even if it doesn't apply to that. And then the eighth one is a budget review. Give us your true budget. We know that this is, an, is a million dollar award. Please don't come in at $999,999. We really want to know if we're going to fund this project, is it a $4 million project? And we know that there's going to be a need for additional funding. One, that tells us there's going to be a need for additional funding. Two, on the flip side of that, is that we will ask you the question of what are you going to do to raise the additional funds in order to complete the project. Just so they know that you're thinking about that this is not our deep pockets that are going to continually approve, uh, fund this particular project. Um, <clears throat> um, I think you're also looking at, and as I mentioned before, understanding the cost per client, customer, or patient. That is something that they will calculate. Um, and it's good for you to know what that cost is. And, and if it seems high, why is it high? What is the complexity that you've built into your particular project that causes it to be high? And one of the areas that I hear this in a lot when I'm working in the realm of homelessness is that when you provide wraparound services for people who are living in the facilities where you're at, it's going to increase your cost. So you know you can't always um, compare apples to oranges in, in different 
be able to talk about your costs and why they are where they're at. It's also, um, if you do have other sources of funding, if you do intend to go after other funds for this particular project, we do want to know that, although it also is not a requirement. Um, but I can't, re I can't emphasize enough how we want to ensure that at this point in time when you submit your proposal, the budget is, to the best of your knowledge, the true and full cost of that particular project. There have also been, I, I don't know if I can go back, um, there have also been in this particular area, um, it's also a place that you can ask or, or say that you're hoping that Alliance would be able to partner with you to, to secure additional funds. And once we've gotten into some of these projects, that has actually been an important role that I have played in partnership with the, pro with the project um, to help them secure other funding. So that's, that's also a possibility. <coughs> In terms of the timeline for this, the application opened last week on the 26th. I've conducted two webinars, one earlier this week and then the, this one today. The applications are due online on May the 6th. They are on our website under Grants. If you click on Grants, you'll see the drop-down menu has the online application. On May the 22nd is when the program committee meets and we will notify those that are participating. Typically, we receive 20 to 25 proposals um, each year. Probably a, a handful of those, maybe three or four, get eliminated because they don't rise to the level of innovation that we're looking for. They're typically less than $100,000 proposals. Um, of those, NC. then, the yes. Uh, you mentioned the deadline is May 6th. Is there any time frame like at 11.59 PM Pacific Center time? And how, or no, what's the time Typically, it's been midnight. Typically, it's been midnight, and okay. so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. So, um, of, the, of the proposals that are then remaining for the program committee to review, they have in the past selected between four and five of, the, of those proposals to go forward to present before the board. And that's what the Pitch Fest is. On July the 17th, the Pitch Fest is when um, those um, finalists are presenting before the board. Um, during the week, during the time between May 22nd and the week before July 17th or July 10th this year, the, the participants are working with a consultant that we have hired to help them um, hone down their proposal into a 15-minute presentation of the highlights that the board needs to know. We've worked with this consultant for many years now, and he knows exactly what the board is looking for, and the pr presentations are really um, much more tuned into what the board is looking for when they get to the Pitch Fest. <clears throat> At the Pitch Fest, there is 15 minutes for your presentation. There are 15 minutes that come from the board and the Blue Ribbon Panel. Then the presenter leaves, and the board and the Blue Ribbon Panel discuss what was presented, um, and they go through that <clears throat> process throughout the day. At the end of the day, there are no presenters. The board and the Blue Ribbon Panel discuss all of the presentations. The Blue Ribbon Panel makes their recommendation to the board, and then the board meets by themselves um, to discuss. I'm there with them, but they no blue ribbon panel and no presenters. But they do discuss then at that time the proposals that were brought before them and whether or not they want to fund. They do reserve the right to, but they have not done so in any of the previous years. And that's the that's the process. I mean, that, those are the that's the application. That's the process. That's the timeline. So are there any other questions that you might have? I can tell you that um, I am available by email or by phone. <clears throat> Probably the best connection is by email first. If you have a project that you want to run by me, I'm more than willing to listen to it and give you feedback about what I see might be strengths and what I see might be some weaknesses or gaps and um, talk with you about what would be good to try to find to fill in those gaps um, and what to talk about. Um, I do, am biased on the side of wanting to get um, applications in because I think it's important for the board to see the types of ideas and, and, and um, innovative thoughts that are happening in our community um, to serve the populations that we care about. So I buy, I'm biased that way to encourage people to apply and to help you as much as I can. Um, to get the strongest proposal in. Um, I 
can tell you that I try and anticipate what the questions are that the board will be asking, but I have never been 100% on target with all of the questions that they might ask. Um, so, but I do, I am available throughout this time period to answer any questions that you might have. And any other questions? And if you are trying to ask a question, I notice that many are still on mute. So if there's a question that you want to ask, make sure you're off mute. Well, then I will um, end our session here. Uh, my email address is in Sasaki, that's spelled S-A-S-A-K-I, at Alliance H f.org. Our information is on our website as well, so you can always find out how to contact me. I thank you again for joining me today on this particular call, and I look forward to seeing your proposal. Thank you so much. Thank you.